What's up guys? It's Marissa with Barely Keeping It Together and today I'm going to share with you five ways to style your kitchen. Hi, I'm Marissa. I'm a borderline crazy dog mom, a landlord, a DIYer, an interior design obsessed pop culture enthusiast, a real estate entrepreneur, and I'm simultaneously managing a long distance relationship while working full time. I'm the kind of woman who doesn't have the patience to get through this recording. So let's get into it. This is Barely Keeping It Together. Let's get into it. Today we are here in my brand new kitchen so I can share with you five different tricks that I've come up with to help you style your kitchen to look elevated, more finished, all the things. And of course, with a toddler in the house, it doesn't always look this way, but this is sort of the goal of um, what I want it to look like on a daily basis, but you know, things ebb and flow, people. Okay, so tip number five is all about styling your kitchen sink. This area tends to be a problem area because it houses, well, everything unattractive, right? So you have your sponges, you have your dish soap, you have, of course, your dirty dishes. So what I have done is just giving you guys a couple ideas of how to style this space to make it feel more aesthetically pleasing. First of all, when possible, you want to ditch slash hide all of your sponges and day-to-day -day grime. I like to keep mine under the sink. If that's not possible for you, you could do um, some sort of attractive container on your countertop, or they even have some that attach into your sink. I can link some below if you guys are interested in attractive ways to store your sponges, but I like to tuck mine away so that people are not seeing those when we're not doing the dishes. Uh, the second thing that I like to do, and I talked about this in my home staging video, I think it's super important to make sure that your soap and dish soap actually look attractive on your countertop. And currently I am just absolutely loving the way amber bottles look on the countertop. So I have this amber hand soap. I got this at um, Marshall's TJ Maxx, uh, but you can also get them of course on Amazon and you can get them at Target. This is the hearth and hand collection soap that we use for our dishes. And we keep this all on the kitchen top, countertop, sorry. And I actually got this um, wood piece that holds them here and it just looks aesthetically pleasing. And I'll try and link items like this below, but this is just a way to make sure you don't have, you know, Dawn dish soap. Now, if you guys do have a preference of, you know, soaps and you're particular about that kind of thing, of course you can get those soaps and empty them into there. I actually use the, Mrs. Meyer's dish soap dumped into that amber bottle just because it looks good in there. Now, the next thing that I like to do is drape over my dish towel or a tea towel that is, you know, um, a prettier one, not like the day-to-day -day kind of grimy one. And this just pulls it together of like, oh, welcome to my kitchen. I just, you know, have a dish towel over my shoulder. I don't know, it just gives an air of luxury. It looks really nice. This is from um, Grove Collaborative, but of course there's tons of attractive dish towels everywhere. We actually got the green for Christmas in the last house, but as you can see, there's tons of green in this house. So um, I've chosen to put the green one out today. So those are just a couple tips and tricks of how you can keep the sink area of your kitchen looking nice. Tip number four is style your kitchen with items that you already own. I'm gonna give you guys a couple of examples. First of all, this is a bowl that I actually have in my pantry right now, but this is absolutely something I could style on my countertops. Just a white plain bowl filled with apples, which are very seasonally appropriate, obviously useful in our day-to-day -day use eating here in the kitchen. Now, another thing that you guys might recognize from my home staging video is this large white bowl that we had styled on the dining table, but now we actually keep on a buffet slash credenza in the kitchen. But in here, this is actually all stuff from the backyard. It's kind of funny because we call this house Pinecone House and we have it filled with pine cones and moss from the backyard. So not only is it like seasonally thematic and attractive, but it was free. We already had this bowl and obviously everything else we just sourced from the backyard. Wow, that was loud. Another thing that I already had 
from staging our last house was this tray, which very easily could be used in the kitchen. I did use it in the old house, you know, with some faux greenery and some vases on here. If you don't have any sort of produce or anything like that. And then a personal favorite of mine is using cookbooks. Um, I have chosen some of my more aesthetically pleasing cookbooks that I have styled on the countertop for day-to-day -day use and some of you know the uglier cookbooks are away but um these are absolutely a way to style your kitchen with something you already own and you know it just makes it feel a little bit more elevated in your day-to-day -day kitchen use the last thing that i want to mention is also something that you guys saw in the previous house which is this marble tray which is incredibly useful um, because every single day we're cooking here next to the stove top and we have our olive oils and our salt and peppers so it's there for our day-to-day -day use um, but it's also pleasing because we have chosen to make sure the olive oil the tray and the salt and pepper holder are all things that are aesthetically like lifting our kitchen space so just sort of hunt around see the items that you already have in your home and you don't have to spend a ton of money to style your kitchen. Okay, tip number three is just clear your space out. Everyone, and I seriously mean everyone, has too much stuff out on their countertops and we are not immune to this. I think that's the word I wanna use. Anyway, there's a toddler who lives in this house. You better believe there is plastic stuff everywhere. There are toys, there are dirty dishes, there are coffee mugs every single day. We have a toaster that I don't have out right now, but you just want to clear it out. So every night before you go to bed or yeah, actually that's my best bet is every night before you go to bed, just make sure that when you wake up, you're going to come downstairs or across the hall or wherever your kitchen is to a kitchen that feels like ugh, there isn't just C-R-A-P everywhere. And then also just like little knick-knacky things are going to make a space feel cluttered. So I put away my toaster. I put away my blender over there sort of tucked away. We do have our coffee maker, but you know, I put away as much as possible and I really just have what the essentials are out on the countertop. It's just going to make your space feel bigger, cleaner, and lighter. And I think that that's the goal to elevate your space. Tip number two to elevate your kitchen space is to add greenery and honestly go bigger than you think. This is actually a large outdoor planter that I never would have thought would look good or like feel right size wise in my kitchen. But I took this and I filled it with some trimmings that I just got in my backyard and it has just really made the space come to life and feel more elevated. Now, I do mention adding greenery in my Studio McGee video, so check that out as well. She always used wispy greens, which I love, but this time I just used some clippings from outside and I think they look really good. You can also do faux greenery if you don't have a green thumb or if you are, you know, talented and into mending to or tending or yeah, tending to plants, you can absolutely get real greenery for your kitchen and it's just going to make the space look, you know, all the more luxurious on the day-to-day -day basis and make you smile when you come into the space. My number one tip for elevating and styling your kitchen is to use an unexpected and luxurious feeling catch all. Now, what do I mean by that? This pedestal bowl, you would normally think, um, if you, by the way, if you guys saw the haul video where I got this catch all, it was pink and I got it at Home Goods. I gave it a little DIY love with some gray spray paint and I think I made it feel much more CB2 or Pottery Barn by adding this more neutral tone. Anyway, if you guys use a catch all that's not one, open so you can see what's in it and two is a little bit more unexpected it feels more sculptural or doing the pedestal bowl on top of the cookbooks like i have here you guys we have scissors wallets car keys notepads all of that everyday junk that just doesn't look good in your kitchen and just accumulates nobody is immune to stuff accumulating in their kitchen but what you can do is store it in something that is sort of out of the box and makes the space look even better. So that's absolutely my number one tip for styling your kitchen. Think outside of the box when it comes to your catch-all. 
Thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching my five tips for styling your kitchen. I have had so much fun with you in my kitchen today. Leave me a comment below. What's your favorite tip? And do you have any tips for me that I haven't thought of? I would love to hear from you. Give this video a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and don't hesitate to subscribe to my channel for more home decor, DIY, all those sorts of videos. I love making them for you. If you have any particular spaces or styles you wanna hear more about, don't hesitate to let me know in the comments down below. I would love to chat with you guys a little more. I will talk to you later. Bye.